Your cell phone tracks your location very accurately, actually within six zucking feet. You probably assume that you're being tracked by GPS, but that's old tech. Would you like to know how you are really tracked today in 2019 and know how to turn it off? Find out in this video. What is the point of learning about how phones track you? Well, it can be really useful if you want to know how to stop it from tracking you. I'll discuss that later in the video. Like anything else in internet privacy, solutions are often complex. So first, a historical perspective. When the first iPhone was released in 2007, the device came with a GPS and the beginnings of location tracking started. Yes, in 2007, in the early iPhone years, we were tracked by GPS. Back then, there was no Find My iPhone feature. And if a law enforcement agency wanted to track you, they would use the GPS on the phone and more likely just strangulate you via cell tower through your phone carrier. Websites could track you. In fact, back then, there were no permissions needed to track location, likely because the locations were fairly general and most worked only within a quarter mile zone. Also, apps didn't really use it for spying. Mostly it was used for guiding you via maps. The accuracy was mostly based on GPS. Mostly. The problem is GPS worked only when the sky was open to the satellites. The moment you entered the building, the location tracking had to switch to cell tower triangulation. Companies like Google wanted to come up with something better. This is where the IT network experts and hackers of the time may have helped, or at least open up the idea of alternative tracking methods. Hackers trying to break into Wi-Fi's would often scout out the Wi-Fi's in the area using a special Wi-Fi adapter on their computer. This capability was not generally available, so you had to buy a special Wi-Fi device for your computer. You had to switch on something called promiscuous mode, and then you will be able to identify all the Wi-Fi networks and their traffic around you. Each Wi-Fi is identified by a MAC address or Media Access Control address, MAC, which is like a unique serial number to each Wi-Fi. This was also a good tool for people who work on networks and often tools would add things like signal strength to the data so an IT guy can reposition Wi-Fi routers. Here's an example of a dedicated device for tracking Wi-Fi's. This promiscuous mode data revealed information like MAC addresses, signal strength, and channels, as well as the actual data. This is an example app that I have on my Windows computer in 2019. This is called Wi-Fi Analyzer. What changed is that around 10 years ago, Practically every computer was sold with Wi-Fi's that had promiscuous mode. This was no longer a special feature. It was built into every computer. Today it is just about in every computer still in use and all of them would have promiscuous mode. Well, someone figured out how to use promiscuous mode to track our locations to six zucking feet. Since Wi-Fi routers are in fixed positions and typically stay there for a few years, Google started to track the locations of Wi-Fi routers on their Street View cars. While Street Views were being photographed, a sensor on the Street View car was tracking the locations of every single Wi-Fi router in the area, including their signal strength and their unique MAC address. They created a worldwide database of routers. Another company formed that used similar tech. It was called Skyhook Wireless. They also had cars driving around each street 
in several countries and used it to build a database of Wi-Fi routers. Now, here's how this was used to find our locations. The technique is called Wi-Fi triangulation. Since all of our devices have promiscuous mode, our device can find out the nearest Wi-Fi and the signal strength. Using a mathematical formula figured out by Google and the database of Wi-Fi routers with their known locations, they can find out your location within six feet based on two Wi-Fi router locations and the signal strength relative to each as seen by your device. In today's world, it's not unusual to find two dozen Wi-Fi's within range of your computer or cell phone. If you're in an office building, there could be hundreds of Wi-Fi's. What's unique about Wi-Fi triangulation is that it's able to work indoors and even figure out elevation. But this was not enough. Sometimes accuracy needed to be improved and Google did not have enough Street View cars to capture the data. So someone at Google figured out a better way. Why not put the Wi-Fi scanning software from the Street View cars in every Android? So now each Android can automatically detect the presence of even a new Wi-Fi router, which can then be added to the Google database immediately. This is now part of the Google Geolocation API or Application Programming Interface. Since Google was in the forefront of location tech, Apple was playing catch up. It bought up a location tracking company startup called Wi-Fi Slam in 2013. Today, location tracking on iPhones is being done using Broadcom chips, which has software created by Skyhook Wireless. Wi-Fi triangulation is in plain use on an Apple device using Find My iPhone. And you will note that it works even on iPads or MacBooks with no GPS. Your location is tracked using a combination of cell tower, GPS, and Wi-Fi triangulation combined. But since most of us are in the presence of Wi-Fi routers, that's the basis of most location tracking, unless you're in an isolated area. Some of you will now ask, how can you disable location tracking? How can you disable the reporting of Wi-Fi routers to Google? or even to Apple or to Skyhook. Let me be clear here. There is no switch for promiscuous mode. All Wi-Fi adapters sense Wi-Fi's around you at all times. You cannot stop this with airplane mode. Since it's at the hardware level, we don't really know if there's a way to switch it off without powering down the device. So there are implications here. If you don't want to be tracked, you cannot have a phone that has power. And I don't mean standby. Even Edward Snowden couldn't be sure if standby mode still had radio frequency emissions. So he actually started a project to see if they can have an RF sensing device attached to your phone. Since some of this is software at the chip level, most of us don't have access to data that can answer this question fully. The company Skyhook Wireless continues to track Wi-Fi routers physically by going to every location around the world, just like the original Street View cars of Google did. Google now does that automatically with their software. I don't know if Apple contributes to the Wi-Fi router database using iOS. We'll just have to assume that this is the case. Android, though, has a setting in the security and location settings called scanning location services. So they allow you to turn off the scan for Wi-Fi routers. However, this doesn't help you much since some other Android user will scan the same Wi-Fi anyway. You can't even hide your Wi-Fi from Google because you are tracked by Wi-Fi's near you. It doesn't need to be your Wi-Fi. Neither does it require you to log into the Wi-Fi. That's not necessary. In conclusion, 
it is safe to say that there is currently no way to evade location tracking unless you A. Turn off the power to your phone completely or B. Switch to a flip phone with no Wi-Fi. Remember, every smartphone has Wi-Fi. Your device must not have Wi-Fi. Without the Wi-Fi, no app can record your location other than the approximate location known to your cell phone carrier. The problem with flip phones is that most don't work with 4G and the old ones are 2G and are no longer compatible. In the description below, I've scanned through some phones available on Amazon that does not have Wi-Fi and listed it below. In theory, you can switch SIM cards to an alternate phone if you don't want location tracking but still want access to a phone. Be careful here. Burner phones still have Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is so cheap to integrate that they all do it by default. As always, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and tap on that notification bell to learn of new videos. I also have a live stream regularly from Friday to Monday each week at 8 p.m. Pacific Time.